And welcome back to the Soar Hire Podcast, a show for leaders by leaders focused on providing business and career advice, tools, and resources to help people achieve higher levels of success in their lives. This, I'm your host, Coach Jason Ballard. So happy to be back with you during this holiday season. Man, we've got a really, really good show for you today. We've got a really, really good uh, friend of mine, fellow veteran, Trace Chesser on the show. Chase is from an organization called USA Cares. It's a nonprofit that supports veterans in many, many ways. And so this holiday season, um, this is a time of year when we think about others. When we think about um, helping others and giving to others and that whole Christmas holiday spirit. And, and, and it's just a real blessing to be able to reconnect with Trace again. And I want him to talk about all of the wonderful things going on and where some needs are. So if you're out there and you're looking to connect to really um, open, honest, transparent organizations that are really out there doing some wonderful, wonderful things for our veterans, this is the kind of organization I highly recommend you connect to. And so without further ado, Trace, welcome to the show, buddy. Thank you, Jason. I, I appreciate you having me on. It's a true privilege. Yeah, well, we, Ch- uh, Trace and I go back he, many, many years. Uh, we're both here in Louisville, Kentucky, and we've both been affiliated with the veteran, um, you know, things that go on here, the various parades and veteran activities and yearly events and and uh, nonprofits and just all all types of things, veteran, you know, legislation and, and improving the quality of life and you name it, we, we've kind of connected in many, many ways. And so, Trace, talk to us a little bit about USA Cares. What is it? What do you do? And what's your mission there? Yeah, I, I will in just a second. But I was trying to think that I think the first time we met was actually we were serving on a board together on a group called Where Opportunity Knox. Is that correct? That's right. Yeah, you came down. Yeah, so that's that's been several years ago. So we both have had that passion to work to improve our our military, our transitioning military, and our veterans' lives. And so I appreciate all the work that you've done over the years. And, and I've had the honor of being able to, to watch you evolve in your career and do a lot of great things. So, again, thank you for giving me a few minutes to get on here and just talk a little bit about what we're doing. So, well, USA Cares was started about 20 years ago. And what was happening about 20 years ago, 2003, that is when the big surge went back into Iraq. We had all those service members going back in, trying to take control of Iraq. Uh, a new thing came about that everyone started talking about. It's called IEDs. And so uh, with the uh, IEDs, we were seeing a lot of service members coming back with some serious injuries. And so um, the military decided they were going to send all of them to Fort Knox to go through a transition program that was specially made for those service members who had suffered severe injuries. Uh, and they knew that they weren't going to be able to continue service, but it wasn't right to just say, okay, we're sorry that you're injured and you're on your way. Um, they decided they needed to spend extra time, work with them because of the limitations that they had. So they created this wounded warrior unit that they put at Fort Knox. That was an active duty military group that helped them transition into the the VA. Well, because of that, we were seeing a lot of service members coming through Louisville, Kentucky, and they were going to Fort Knox. The community noticed it and really got behind it and wanted to do something. So some individuals got with Wave TV that's here in Louisville. And uh, the president there was very engaged with his name, Steve. He was he really wanted to do something, Kroger, everyone else. So they started selling yard signs to try to raise funds to help service members that were going through a difficult time. And it went over so well, they had to create a 501c3. So 2003, USA Cares was born and it all started right here. So... That's just wow. the kind of the story about what happened there. Yeah, that that's amazing, you know, and you're you're absolutely right. When we went to the well, I was still active duty at that time myself and we were I, I was in the Air Force. You're you're making mention to to many arm, um, you know, folks in the army here at Fort Knox. Mm-hmm. 
I was in the Air Force and I was part of one of the first, you know, waves of people that went into Iraq. I remember it. We, we left um, the 13th of February, um, 2003, we were the first yeah. wave of folks to go into Iraq. And we were kind of in, on the border of uh, Saudi Arabia and Iraq. And we, we launched out of there uh, not too long after that and, and then went into Iraq and took, took, took Iraq pretty quickly, thank goodness. Um, and yeah, it, it was a whole new era of warfare at that point because while we were in Afghanistan going after, you know, bin Laden and a lot of, you know, bad guys that, that plotted against us for 9-11, um, you know, Afghanistan was a different environment than Iraq. It was, it was just uh -huh. a different, a different animal in many ways. And so going into Iraq, you're right. The tactics were completely different in, in the, the IEDs, the improvised explosive devices, those were lethal. We didn't have yes. the right, you know, armor. We, some of the vehicles we had didn't even have armor at all. The armor we had right. wasn't, you know, strong enough to to deal with that. And so we lost so so many folks um, due to those types of new uh, tactical warfare uh, tactics that these these folks uh, launched against us. It took us a few minutes to get ahead of that, but a lot of people got injured. And you know, you know, you you hear about PTSD today. You hear about TBI, the traumatic brain injuries, and our troops have gone through a tremendous amount of pain and agony and sacrifices as a result. And here's this army program that was born um, to take care of those folks because it was such a big, they were overwhelmed. Yes. Um, you know, I can't remember, were you still in at that time or had you, had you yeah, gotten out? Or that, where? Was, that was right. That was close to retirement time frame. So yeah, it yeah. was, uh, everything was different. The, the military as a whole, everything was changing. And, um, but people were very passionate about it. They wanted to see, uh, they knew that we went back in and, and people were divided, you know, should we, should we not? But I think the one common thing, uh, and, and it even started way back when during Desert Shield and Desert Storm, regardless of your political beliefs, uh, people wanted to support the service members. Unfortunately, you know, unfortunately, right. Vietnam and the other groups, they didn't get that. And so, uh, you know, I was very grateful that everyone was so supportive. But yeah, that, that was a yeah. very different time frame. It was. Uh, one one thing that I did notice that the country did rally around during that time and, and really become more patriotic, more friendly, neighborly, uh, and engaged and wanted to contribute to some level in some way, which I thought was very, very good for our nation. And and I'm glad these programs evolved. But, you know, a lot of these military organizations, all four branches were really kind of overwhelmed by um, how these things transpired and, and impacted our troops and their families. I mean, we, we talk about military members, but, but their families as well. It's very traumatic for them. So talk to us about where USA Cares is today. What, what all types of things do you do? What kind of services are you providing for folks today? Yeah, Jason, it's, again, the passion of the people is the driving force behind it. Uh, we're not seeing the amputees coming home like we did before, but you mentioned it earlier. Uh, people with PTSD, traumatic brain injury, uh, they're still suffering. And we're going to see that for years to come. And, you know, we, we both pray and hope that we don't have any more major conflicts. But even if we don't, you know, the millions of service members that went and served and, and did their job, uh, there's a lot of them that's struggling a little bit. So while the mission of USA Cares has always been to provide financial emergency assistance for our post 9-11 military members, veterans, uh, and their families that are going through really tough times, you know, to stop an eviction, stop foreclosure, turn on utilities in the middle of winter if you're up in Michigan or Minnesota, uh, get them some food. Um, that's what we've stayed focused on. And something that I learned early on, we used to talk about it in a different way. 
uh, more like, you know, we, we try to do this with housing or we do this with combat injured. Uh, the reality is what we've learned, and, and it's from so many sources, active military, the VA officials, everyone else, the services that USA Cares is providing, they help to improve the quality of life for our veterans and their families and help to reduce factors that can contribute to veteran suicide. If you allow a service member to, maybe they're, they're just going through a very difficult transition. Maybe they don't have all the, the physical injuries that we've mentioned, but they have went through uh, emotional stress and strain and then they're transitioning out and they're having a tough time getting into the workforce or uh, just in general. Maybe they need to go to treatment to the VA, but if they do, they're going to lose their job. Uh, we step in in those gaps and we try to help those people with those emergency financial needs because if you allow a veteran to have their kids sent off to go live with an aunt, uncle, grandparents, or someone else because they can't provide, they're being kicked out of their home, they're being evicted. They're going already through a lot of difficult transition issues, but now on top of it, they feel like a failure and they lose their family. I've had numerous individuals with the VA tell me, that is the point, if you drew a line, that is the point. When a veteran loses their family and they're evicted, that's when the probability of suicide escalates quickly. I mean, it, it just takes off. Hmm. Uh, if we waited, if USA Cares, for example, if we decided, you know, we're just going to focus on helping the homeless veterans. We already do help some homeless veterans, but that's, but the reality is we're trying to focus on it early on before the eviction happens. Like you have an eviction letter in hand. We try to focus on it then because if we wait until the homeless situation happens, how many have we already lost? You know, we talked earlier about 22 veterans a day taking their lives. And that's a hot topic. I work a lot with elected officials. I go to DC a lot talking about veteran issues. Yeah. And you'll get different answers. And it's not that anybody's trying to hide anything. It's just, there's different ways to report it. They're still analyzing. I mean, some, the VA will say 17 a day. Uh, you hear a lot of groups say 22 a day. Uh, there are reports out now that say it could be as high as 40 a day. So, you know, there's wow. a lot of factors involved with that and how you measure that because, you know, is it suicide? Was it accidental death? You know, is it undetermined? So those numbers are all over the board. But we are focused on right then, right there. Let's stop an eviction. Let's keep a family together. Let's allow those kids to stay in the home with the parents. And if we do that, and in most cases, they bounce right back. They're very resilient. They just need that somebody to hit that pause button. And then we do some all other things, you know, career transition training online and financial literacy courses. So we, we work a lot on trying to create a sustainable model so that they recover and move on. But a lot of times they just need somebody to wrap their arms around them. Yeah. Wow. You know, Trace, the interesting thing in our country today is, is, is about 1% of the people in our U S population have ever served in the military. 99% of the people that walk the streets of America today do not know what it's like to serve. And what it's like to make sacrifices that the military people make, and what the, what what kind of things they go through, what kind of challenges they have. There's 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 a lot of unknowns out there, and and you know the military world. You know everybody's patriotic on Veterans Day and Fourth of July and Mem Memorial Day, and all these all these all these you know holidays and different things where we think about the troops and we think about sacrifices on a kind of a broader scale and there's fireworks and all that kind of stuff. And that's, that's really, really great. I think it's great that our country does take time out uh, of the, of the schedule, so to speak throughout the year to recognize these different types of things. But, you know, from, for a lot of folks, they just don't know what it's really like 
right? Unless they have a family mm-hmm. member or somebody that they're, you know, a neighbor or somebody that they're really closer to in that situation. So tell us a little bit, educate the audience here a little bit on what it's, what, what are some of these unknowns, you know, the things that people really go through in the military that they don't talk about? Because military people are strong, resilient people mm-hmm. that are trained to go through really tough situations and they don't ask for help. They, they're very yeah. prideful, you know, tough minded people. And that's just part of the training of being military. You and I know that we're both ex military people. We're, we have those, those kind of qualities in us too. But there's just so many things that military people or ex military people go through that are just unknowns. Educate us on that. What kind of stuff are, are your folks you're working with going through that, that most people don't even know about? Well, I think in a different episode, and you could ask someone else about this or we can talk about it later. But if you start all the way back to the beginning, uh, if you look at how difficult it is to get into the military, and a lot of people are like, what are you talking about? So there are qualifications that you have to pass to get in the military. The first one is an aptitude test, the ASVAB. Uh, The ASVAB is not a given that you're going to pass. I mean, it, you know, you have to, I mean, you can get in most colleges, you know, if you can pass the ASVAB with that score that they're expecting you to get. So that is a one step that eliminates a lot of people from being able to get in. And then you have the physical aspect, the, you know, do you have any type of medical issues? Because, you know, something like being colorblind will eliminate three quarters of the jobs that you can do in the military. Or if you had any pins, plates, screws, you're a football player and you have all these screws now in your ankle, uh, you can't get in. Asthma or any other type of uh, medication that could be for like severe ADHD or something like that. So then there's another factor that eliminates a lot of people. And then you have the, they call it moral standards, um, law violations, DUIs, domestic violence, uh, violent crimes of any sort. Um, So that's a third area. So when people look at military individuals uh, or veterans, I think they need to realize that they are a part of a pretty selective group because the military, the government in general, has to invest a lot in them. And they don't want to have someone that's going to have issues that can't perform the duties or the training or, or pat. So uh, I think a lot of people need to know, first and foremost, when you're dealing with a veteran, you, uh, I actually was in a briefing at Fort Knox and I heard this, uh, of the age, like 18 to 35 years old, 18 to 35 year olds across the country right now less than 74%, I think it was, qualify. Only only the 26%, the only one quarter of the 18 to 35 year olds or 34 year olds uh, can even qualify to get in the military, even if they wanted to. Mm. So first and foremost, you're dealing with a, a pretty, pretty good group of people, high standards to, to achieve to right. even get in. Uh, the training that we have all went through, you know, we had different types of training, but you go through extensive training. And I mean, it's, it's pretty fast paced. And I mean, and the stakes are high in a lot of cases. Um, you know, I remember being a very young, very 20, I don't, I may not have been legal to drink. I'm not even sure. Maybe I was 21, maybe I was 20 and I was a sergeant in the army and I was responsible for several guys lives. And I was expected to train them. And, and so they put you through a lot really, really quick. And, and they bring the best out of people. So I hope that anyone who is listening, that whole stigma that it used to be, you only go in the military if you can't do anything else. That's not true. And so yeah, it's not your grandpa's uh, military anymore where the judge says, hey, either you go in the military, or you go to jail. What, which one you want yeah. to do? No, it's exactly. it's high caliber people yep. mentally, physically, you know, intelligence wise, yep. physically. I mean, it's they look for the whole person concept yep. when they they look to bring somebody in, not just 
any old person that's got a, you know, a couple arms and a couple legs that yeah. can, that can breathe. Right. It, it, right. It's not like that anymore. You're right. No, it's not. So you have some pretty high caliber for lack of better terms, individuals that did really well in school and, and they've done great things. Then we throw them into the military and you have to indoctrinate them in some way. Maybe it was officer basic course, or maybe it was basic training for the enlisted. And they put them through all this training. And I know we used to say that a service member really wasn't proficient and really, really couldn't be expected to fully produce and do their job until they were in about a year. So we yeah. take all that time to train and develop young leaders in super high tech jobs. And then, you know, so again, here's another thing. We take a year maybe to develop them. But back to your original question, what do they go through? We, as a country, as a military, they're doing a much better job of helping them transition out. But the reality is they go from being a part of a, a high level elite uh, team, you know, for lack of better terms, if you, you know, imagine being on a sports team and you're one of the, you know, the state champions of a team and how close you are and how tight you are and, and all the things you did together. Uh, it's kind of like that. And then suddenly you're getting out and you're no longer on the team. And so uh, now think about the emotional stress and strain of that. You know, the, the military doesn't just do everything for you. You have to be a high level thinker. You have to be independent. You have to do a lot of things. And a lot of them have family members. So now suddenly you go from this, this team to your getting out and maybe you have your family and you have to transition out. Well, suddenly there's not a team and people don't understand what you've done. And they, they think that, yeah, you went in the military because you probably weren't quite cut out for a high level college university or whatever. And, and again, none of that's true, but there is a disconnect and, and you and I can connect on so many levels because yeah. while we didn't actually serve in the military together, we understood each other. We know a little bit about what we did. And so there's a that's familiarity. Right. And when people get out, they don't have that. And suddenly they don't know who to go to. And they feel like, well, I shouldn't be asking these questions because everyone's looking at me like, you know, why don't I understand uh, transitioning service members really, really have a tough time with something uh, we talk about a lot. It's called loss of sense of purpose. Uh, mm. they, they, they lose that, that feeling of I do this because. And suddenly now they're like, I don't know what to do and no one wants me. And so that's where, you know. Again, USA Cares deals with a lot of people going through really, really tough times. Most service members, the mass, mass, mass majority, excel and go on and do great things, just like you. Some, it, they run into a couple of roadblocks and they have some hiccups. And so yep. that's what I think a lot of them deal with that most people don't realize. Well, that's... Man, you bring out such great points, and thank you for kind of walking us through that. Because you know, it give you know gives you some insight to what the, what a day in the life of a of a troop really is, right? It's it's high speed, high demand, highly disciplined. You know, everything you do is 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 wide open. You know, you're you know I had a boss one time say, you know, being in the military is like living in a fishbowl because every Everybody in the world can, you know, in and outside of the military can can see what you're doing. They're looking at you. They're looking if your boots are shiny. You know, you, you if you're working at at uh, off at Air Force Base in Omaha, Nebraska, and you go go home, pick up your kid from daycare, and go stop by the grocery store and get a couple things. 
you know, people are looking at you in the daycare, people are looking at you in the grocery store, pe- everywhere you go, you got that uniform on, you've got to walk the line, you got to be the example, you got to represent the country, you're representing the nation, right? Mm-hmm. So your uniform's got to look good, your haircut's got to be tight, your boots got to be shiny, right? They, that's the image, that's, that's the expectation, and you're always on all the time, because people know you're military, they, they just look at you differently. It's hard yeah. to explain, but people just look at you differently. And so being in the military, not only, you know, do you, do you go and experience all the things you were just talking about, but the intensity of the pace for which you operate, you go to a base, you're there for six, seven months. Um, you, you didn't take long and you gotta, you gotta get up to speed in your new job, meet new bosses, new coworkers Mm -hmm. and get in the, in, in the organization. And then you get about a year in, and then, you know, if you were in the, in the two thousands, you probably deployed somewhere, Mm -hmm. you know, Iraq, Afghanistan, you know, uh, Cuba, wherever. I mean, they're all over the, we're all over the world. Right. Yeah. And so then you deploy, then you leave your family behind for seven, eight months. Then you come back and get reacclimated, reconnect with the family. And, you know, and and that whole transition is tough because the family's moved on without you and things are, are a lot different when you come back than they were when you left and you're stuck trying to figure that out. And you do. And I felt it. Mm-hmm. My wife, you know, you know, I got this. I don't need you to do this, you know, and I felt like I wasn't needed because mm-hmm. she had been doing it for eight months without me. And it t- it took me a while to reacclimate. And that's a, that's a tough thing. Well, about the time you reacclimate, you go back to your normal job again in the military from the deployment. Then you're a few months out from packing up and moving again and starting that whole process over and over. Move work, deploy, come back, work, pack up, move, do it over again. And that is grueling to go through, especially if you're in for, you know, 20 plus years or whatever, it's grueling. And so you're right. Military people are competitive. They're type A's, they're go-getters, they're, they're people that, that just will not fail. Mm -hmm. They're all the same. And so when you're used to that high, level of excellence. You know, you're, you're, when you're deployed, when you're working together, you're literally brothers and sisters in arms. You're counting on each other to save each other's lives. If a bad day were to happen, that creates a brotherhood and a sisterhood that you don't get anywhere else, anywhere else. And so there's a high, um, high amount of achievement there, high amount of, of team there and commitment. And when you work in the military, you're serving no greater cause than the cause of protecting the nation for which you signed up to serve, right? You know, the, 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 the children, the elderly people, all the people that can't fight for themselves and defend themselves against bad people that want to cause harm to us. Right. And so that's an awesome responsibility and there's no greater calling a sense of purpose than serving on that level in that way. And so when you get out, that in many ways goes away. And there's a mm-hmm. vacuum effect. You know, when yes. I got out, I, I felt that very same thing. I'm not important anymore. I'm, where do I go? What do I do? Who the heck am I? I yeah. remember asking myself that question many times, lay in bed and I'm like, I don't even know me anymore. Right. Who am I? What am I? What am I good? And you start second guessing yourself Trace, talk to us, you know, take us from there, from the people you're working with and the people that are in these transitions and go through these different stages of, of maturity and life after the military. Take us from there. What are the things you're seeing in people at that point? What happens? What, what are some of the things that you, you are having to rally you and your team around to help people that start spiraling in yeah. that direction? Yeah, I first thing I want to say is the mass majority are just like you and I. We find our place, we figure it out, and we move on. Uh, I say that because, like, say, I just had lunch uh, 
earlier today with one of the senior level commanders at Fort Knox. And I know that they, they are working really hard to recruit new members into our military today. And so I, I guess I want to say, I don't want it to sound like what I'm telling you is the majority. It's not, it's a, it's a small group, but the thing is that small group served our country and was willing to fight and die for our country if they had to. And so that makes me even more passionate about, we're going to try to help them because um, they didn't, they didn't expect this. They didn't expect to come home feeling that loss of sense of purpose, that loss of identity. Um, We see a lot of them come home that, they can't articulate what it is they did in the military to a civilian mm. employer. That's that's a huge obstacle for a lot of people. Um, and I'm talking about I've had everything from general officers down to somebody who did two to three years in. Um, my position, I have to deal with everything with USA Cares. So, you know, I I'm dealing with the stopping the eviction, stop the foreclosure, you know, the case management team, the, all these things. But one of the areas that we deal with is career transition. It's just one area of many areas. And that I'm very passionate about. Um, and again, that's where we first met, was trying to help service members transition. That is a massive obstacle. And service members, Getting out, and I don't care if you were in the Air Force, Space Force, Army, Marines, uh, Coast, it doesn't matter. The way that we did things and how we uh, performed these jobs were different in most cases than what they are in the civilian sector. But the one common thing is, is that if you had the intelligence and motivation to do something, you could learn it and you could do it very well. Um, but as a, uh, infantry, uh, officer, um, leading service members into combat, uh, how does that transition into a civilian job and how do you articulate that? Uh, one that maybe is a little more simple is if you were transportation, you were a truck driver. Well, that's a little bit easier to explain. Um, But there are so many jobs in the military that you lived it, you did it, you know it in the military. But then when you get out, now you got to go out into this strange world and try to explain to someone, this is what I did and this is how I did Like a paratrooper. What in the world are you going to use that for? <laughs> I mean, that's not a job in the military, but it's a additional skill that some other military will go through. And it's a method of getting to work. You know, how did you get to work today? Well, I drove in my car. Well, some people will say I jumped out of plane. So, you know, how do you articulate that? And, and it's tough. And a lot of people are excited. And back to your 1% theory of, you know, 330 million U.S. citizens and all, less than 2 million are wearing uniform today. Well, yep, you're less than 1%. So how often is it that they run into those situations of not being able to explain, this is what I did, this is how I did it? And a lot of people will look at them and say, that's nice, that's good. I can see how that's very helpful. But will they actually take a chance on that individual? That's where a lot of challenges come from. Yeah. Yeah, you're absolutely right. People are are a little less risk adverse because they don't understand the military dynamic Mm -hmm. and what they're what all they're getting from somebody when they do show up, especially if they come from a more of an obscure, you know, career path. What kind of programs do you guys have in USA Cares that helps people kind of go through this transition? What kind of results are you seeing? Talk to us about that a little bit. So USA Cares, we're getting approximately 100 applications a week that they go online. You go to usacares.org and you can go there and you can see it to where it's like, I need assistance, apply to assist or for assistance. And you fill out this long application and then it goes to our case management team for whatever your need is 
it goes there. Uh, so we're talking about we're helping people all over the country. We're not just in Kentucky. Um, so when you think of it that way, you got to understand we have some tools in place to help uh, service members or veterans who are wanting to improve their job situation, obtain employment or get better employment. So we have an online course that virtually if somebody's setting in Texas or Minnesota or wherever, they can go through our courses and it's just uh, kind of a coaching training trying to help them understand how to better articulate what they did, how to get the tools in place that, you know, social media, LinkedIn, who would have thought, you know, LinkedIn was going to be the number one tool for hiring people, but it has become that. Yep. Service members don't know that. So we do a yep. lot of coaching training, trying to help them improve their situation there. Now, locally, we have the program that helps uh, transitioning service members that are getting out. We manage it for Fort Knox. Uh, I agreed to do this a couple of years ago because the program we used to work with where Opportunity Knox was kind of phasing out and they wanted yep. somebody to take it over. So you, USA Cares, we decided that we could help do that. It's not the norm of what we're dealing with, but we'll help do it. And we do it very, very well. We have one of the top programs in the nation. So Jason is about to get out of the Air Force. He's transitioning out and he wants to come back to this area he can sign up for this program before he even gets out and go through a career skills program or a DOD skill bridge program. Those are two common terms that HR professionals have probably heard. Um, right. Really what it means is you come to us, we help prepare you and we can put you with an employer that kind of matches up skill sets based on what you did versus what you want to do and what their needs are. And we'll put you in an eight week program. You're still in the military. So the military is still paying you. Uh, the employer doesn't have to pay you. The military pays you. It's a part of your transition. Um, they don't have to provide benefits. You still have all that, but you'll spend eight weeks working with that employer and learning what it's going to be like when you get out. And I will tell you, I'll have to say it, GE Appliances is probably the number one supporter of this program. They beg us to send everybody out there for them to screen them <laughs> and see if they're going to be good for the program. But I will also tell you, GE Appliances has hundreds of veterans who work for them. And so the success yeah. rate of going through that program and getting integrated into their like veteran resource group and everything is super high. I mean, we're over 90% employment, all programs. Wow. That's amazing. That is amazing. That's a great program. That is a, a an outstanding program. You've been doing an excellent job uh, with, you know, Fort Knox and all in and, and a lot of other community partners here. Uh, GE is one, one of the bigger uh, organizations big here one. in Louisville, but but so is Humana and UPS. Yep. There's many, many companies that are involved in this, whether they're large, yep. small, or medium. And Trace has got a, you know, the USA Cares just has an amazing network. They are national. They, even though they're headquartered here in Louisville, Kentucky, they are a national organization helping people uh, all over the nation that that are either transitioning out, looking for help if, if they run into some financial difficulties or having medical problems or issues with you know ptsd they have a a just a a massive repository of resources and tools and things to you know if they personally can't uh usa cares personally can't you know help them with whatever issue it is that they may be experiencing they are connected to many organizations that can that's near them that can be kind of a one source for um military members to go to, to get connected and, and create that community, create that village around them. As they say, it takes a village to, to be successful in life. And that is very, very true. And the military is good at doing that when you're in, um, when you get out that there's some struggles there in USA care. I, I cares. I it does a wonderful job of kind of, you know, simulating that, if you will, and, and helping people connect in those kind of ways. This particular program, this internship type program he's talking about, 
I've seen it firsthand. I know people have gone through it. It is a really phenomenal program. I'm hoping and praying that this this can continue to evolve and be benchmarked across the nation with other military bases and other um, organizations out there because it's an amazing, amazing program. So I just want to make sure for the audience, you know, USA Cares, one, helps veterans in transition out of the military successfully into the civilian sector. They help you with resumes, help you with interview prep, help you Mm -hmm. translate. You know, you you did a, a great job of explaining it, Trace. It's translating some of your skills and duties that you uh, it, built experience in, in the military to civilian sector applications, right? There's there's a translation that sometimes needs to happen there. And you guys help people connect those dots uh, with the employers as well as the, mm-hmm. the members themselves. They also help people financially if they're, you know, running into a tough time, they're in between jobs or, you know, something, you know, uh, an emergency situation happened and they're, they got in an automobile accident and they're without a vehicle or whatever. People go through tough times and, and you know, especially military members that have gone through a lot of different things, especially if they're working with VA and, and, and medically, you know, working through things. That's tough. That is really, really tough. And so you guys do a phenomenal job of just wrapping your arms around and helping people financially, medically, uh, job search in, in transition wise and many other things. Um, it, it truly is an amazing group of people, um, that truly cares. You know, one thing I know about your organization is everybody in it has a massive heart and truly, truly cares about the military veteran Mm -hmm. and making sure they're successful as they, there's a, there's an old saying in the military across all the branches leave no man or woman behind. We just don't, we take care of each other. And you guys do that for people, even when they do transition out. So thank you for, for what you do there. Um, Trace, amazing group. What do you have any kind of campaigns or any kind of, you know, end of year Christmas things going on? Talk to, talk to us about how people, if, if they're looking to support a wonderful, worthy cause like USA Cares, how do they do that? What are the ways they can plug in? So if you go to usacares.org, you're going to notice some different areas on there. Something may say something about, you know, getting assistance. Well, that's your your veteran or your active duty military that's really struggling right now and need help. So they'll go to that area. But you'll see something about give. And, you know, support, invest. And I always say invest in a military family because Mm. they are worth it. And um, we just recently got recognized by, for those of you who do not know, if you're looking at a nonprofit, we always tell everybody, go to Charity Navigator. Charity Navigator is that rating system. It's kind of like Better Business Bureau. They have a nonprofit arm that they, and they dig through everything. And I'm proud of that. So I tell everybody, hey, go look at this because uh, we just received the rating of four out of four stars. And so we received the top level. And there's about three more that we received the top level. And so I always tell people, if you're thinking about a nonprofit, if you're curious about how financially responsible are they, are they doing what they said they'll do? Uh, you should look that up. You know, Newsweek magazine at the 20th anniversary of 9-11 talked about tens of thousands of nonprofits that were formed after 9-11 and that most of them did okay. Most of them, you know, did their job. They said, we want to name six that are still doing the job and doing it well. USA Cares was one of the six. So we're super proud of what our team's doing. They're doing amazing things all over the country. Uh, We got chapters that are, growing in other cities to try to spread and get across the country. So some people may want to get involved with the chapter and try to help out there. Uh, Some people may want to donate. Some people in this time of year, we get a lot of individuals that are doing well and they have like donor advisement funds. Uh, They may want to use, you know, they want to donate some of the, you know, the wealth they have, you know, because of the tax implications behind it. Um, So, you know, we try to include everyone. If you know, if you want to donate, um, 
if you have an eviction letter in hand, you're three or four months behind on your rent. And so think about that for a moment. If you're three to four months behind, maybe you've had to go to the VA for treatment or you have a medical issue that's preventing work or you just have lost a job. Uh, three to four months behind means you're three or four thousand dollars behind. So that's the thing about USA Care is that I didn't realize when I stepped in this role how big of a job it is. Uh, so when they're reaching out saying, I'm sending the kids off to go live with someone else. I'm about to be evicted. Here's my eviction letter. That landlord won't talk to us for less than probably two to four thousand dollars, we'll say. And I mentioned earlier, we get 100 applications a week from all over the country. And it's mm. every other nonprofit that you can imagine is telling veterans, hey, call USA Cares, they'll help you. And they're not sending the funds with it. So they're just referring people. So financial, uh, if you wanted to sponsor a family, go to our website. We can show you how. Uh, but yeah, if you think about it, 100 applications a week, 5,200 a year, if it's say it's $4,000 per $5,000, $4,000, that's $20 million of need. So wow. we have a we have a big job in front of us. That's critical. I don't think most people today in America, if you were to, you know, kind of do the old jaywalking tactics and walk up and down the streets and ask people questions, um, I don't think they would know that. I don't think people understand the needs that are out there. Maybe in their local community, but on a grand scale, I don't think people know that 22 members uh, our veterans uh, in the military, you know, unfortunately commit suicide every day due to various reasons. I don't think they understand that, you know, $20 million in need of, of people and in, in various transitions of their life is out there. I think if people knew that, um, the statistics would be different because I think, I think people would step up and do things. So thank you so much, Trace, for you and your team and all the great things that you guys are doing and continuing to grow and evolve and, and just do more and more things uh, much when you, when you're have the responsibility that USA cares has with this group of people that you serve comes great responsibility. Yeah. And this is an awesome, awesome responsibility. I know, cause I know you well, and we've talked many times and spent a lot of time together over the years. I know you literally lose sleep over this, you know, quite often that it, you're thinking about it and you're, you know, there's more need. And so, and, uh, you know, and I'm glad you mentioned the four star rating because a lot of people that want to give aren't, are nervous about giving to things because they don't know, well, how mm -hmm. much of this money is going to go to a veteran? How much of this money is going to be taken up yep. in administrative fees or the CEO's bonus this year or whatever that <laughs> may be. And I will tell you firsthand that the money goes to the veterans. This is a very lean organization. And if you compare to other, you know, nonprofits, um, the money goes to the veterans. And so if you're looking for an, an honest and transparent, worthy cause where you know you can make a difference, whether you volunteer, whether you help somebody, you know, build a wheelchair ramp into their home, whatever you want to do to contribute and help, contact usacares.org. There's phone numbers and emails and things on the mm -hmm. site that you can talk to somebody and say, hey, I just feel like helping somebody paint their house. I feel like donating money. I feel like I want to do something for the veteran community. How, plug me in coach. Where do we go? How do we, how can I help in, in the ways that I can help? Cause there's clearly a significant more demand than there is supply of, of the resources right now. And so go to usacares.org, plug in. People need you. People have sacrificed everything in many, many ways to, to give to the freedoms of our country, help people in need. They're out there, whether you see them, whether you know it, they're out there and USA cares can connect you up with that. Um, Trace, any other final thoughts that you want to leave people with? Um, I think that something I, I've just thought of, I'd love to see is if you've heard this podcast, go to some social media platform because we're all over social media. Go on there 
and just find a post, any post, or find several posts. I don't care what you find. You know, but go on there and say something about uh, you watch this the Soar Higher podcast and you just comment, say, hey, I heard about you from that podcast. Nothing else. I just I want to see how many people uh, will recognize it because then you are connecting to us through social media. And, and I, I yep. always always love to hear about how do people find you as it cares. Yeah. Yeah, that's really great. You know, you you got a great social media presence, and of course, the podcast uh, is all 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 uh, on all of the major uh, podcast networks. You know, Google, iHeart, you know, you name it, we're we're on it. But we're also on all of the major um, uh, social media platforms as well. Just mm -hmm. you know, uh, my, my podcast, the program, the company, you and yep. what you're doing is so go out there, like, like them, connect with them, comment with them, repost it, share the news of, of the need and, and connecting to a really good, um, grassroots oriented organization that truly cares about making a difference and where whatever you decide to do will absolutely connect directly to a veteran and help somebody in a time of need. We all go through times of need and struggle. That's just uh, life um, and the way it is in this world. Um, let's connect, let's help. This is the time of year to do that for our veteran community. Yeah. Trace, thank you so much for thank being you. on the show and sharing their story, sharing about USA Cares. Um, I don't think enough people know about that. And I, I hope this helps connect more people to you in bigger, better ways. Thank you. I appreciate you allowing me to do this. Great seeing you. Yeah. Yeah. It's always a pleasure. Uh, we need to uh, catch up and, and do some coffee and, and breakfast again or something, but such a pleasure. So again, usacares.org, connect, help a veteran. And I hope you all have a wonderful, wonderful Christmas uh, thank you for listening to the show. This has been a, a, a great year for Soar Higher. Uh, hopefully you've been able to take away all the, the, the things that we've been able to provide here with great folks like Trace and, and, and help improve your life to some extent. That's all for today's show. We'll see you next time. Merry Christmas. <music>